Hello and welcome. In this video, we are going to be taking a look at how to enable cause in Visual Studio. So, just for those that aren't sure what cause is, I mean, this isn't a video about cause as such. This is just a video about how to enable cause in Visual Studio. I'm going to go ahead and assume that the reason you're watching this video is because you've hit an issue and you want to know how to resolve it. But just for those that aren't aware, cause, and let's just quickly go to the uh, the Microsoft document on how to do this. Cause stands for cross origin requests, okay? And essentially what this means is that if you're making a call via, let's say Ajax uh, to your API, if the application that's calling your API isn't sitting on the same domain, then the browser security will prevent that request from taking place. So let's just look at a really quick example. So let's say, let's say for example, your, let me change the font just so you can see it. That looks okay. So let's say for example, you have um, an API and let's say it's deployed on www.my-api.com. And let's say that you have a website which is deployed on a different domain. So let's say www.my-app.com. Now, if you wanted to make requests to this API, which is hosted on a clearly a different domain from this API, then the browser security will prevent that request, that cross origin um, request from happening unless this API has enabled cause okay so I'm guessing that's why you're here so let's have a quick look at how we can go about doing that so let's go to Visual Studio let's very very quickly create a new project uh, ASP.NET web application let's go next create web API obviously create I actually had to enable cause on an API that I previously built because um, I had deployed it and I didn't know that the client caller was going to be calling it via Ajax uh, and they basically let me know that they weren't able to call it so I actually had to enable cause myself. So okay in order to do this what we want to do is right click on references manage NuGet and we're going to click on browse. Now on the Microsoft document, it'll let you know that you can just go ahead and where is it? You can install via the, the command line. Here it is. So you can obviously install the package via the command line. However, I'm just going to show you how to do it via the GUI. So if you just do a search for, well, in fact, if you, if you literally just do a search for cause, you'll be able to find it. So obviously we're using microsoft.aspnet.webapi.cause and obviously if you look here you've got one for ASP.NET Core um, core.cause uh, obviously the spelling c-o-r-e dot c-o-r-s um, but the one we want because we're using aspnet.webapi.cause this is the one we want so all you need to do is click install of course, uh, we have to accept the license, which I've previously read. Um, that happened rather quickly, if that's already happened. Okay, well that was quick. As you can see, it doesn't take very long. At this point, I would recommend, if you haven't done so already, I'd recommend updating all of your, your new get packages, but obviously that, that um, isn't part of this video. That's outside the scope of this video. So let's just quickly, quickly, look at what else is required. So the only other thing you need to do, well actually there's two more things you need to do. You need to enable cause in the config. So all you need to do is go to app underscore start, go to web API config, and right about here, you want to enable config.enable cause. And then actually what we'll do is we'll build it just to make sure that everything's working as it should, and it is. If we go to references actually, we can probably see mm, there it is 
system.web.cos and system.web.http.cos so these are these are libraries that have been added um, so we've done that and the only other thing we have to do is go to the controller well I'm just going to use the out of the box controller for the sake of this example and we just need to add this here we enable cause okay and we want to do that right at the very top where the class is um, and what we've got here Oh, and you see a little uh, red squiggly line. Obviously, just we need to use system.web.http. Cause obviously that's one of the uh, system.web.http.cos. That's one of the uh, DOLs that we've used that was installed for us um, here. Obviously, okay. So th this bit's important. So the origins. So essentially, here you can actually add a comma separated list. Of domain so in the example oh, I've actually closed it let me uh, let me load word again very quickly um, quickly use a font right so earlier on the example we had was www.my-api.com sorry can't type today and we've deployed our app let's say or the calling app is www.my.app.com so obviously in this instance we've deployed our API here but this is the app that wants to make calls to our API using Ajax uh, cross origin this is the origin it's a different domain to our API so in this instance what we would do is we would use that domain and put it there if you are happy to let any caller call this web API and you don't really care then obviously you can put a star and that will allow any callers to be on different domains and make requests from a browser um, and the other option of course is say for example you had a number of uh, domains that you wanted to enable so let's say my app one then actually you can have a comma separated list here like so let's just build it and that's been successful and that is it so I'm hoping that you found this video helpful I've had to do this in the past this video certainly would have helped me. Um, if it helped you, maybe consider hitting that like button for the YouTube algorithm. And uh, if you want to see similar content to this going forward, consider subscribing. And until next time, take care.